like real YouTuber mics? Like, do you put these on your shirt? Can you do ASMR? You can do it all in ASMR if you really want to. Brush noises. Getting ready with me. Makeup noises. And okay, let's start the video. The other day I asked my Instagram followers what their diabolical art opinions are. And wow, it really was delivered. Over 140 submissions were <laughs> sent to my inbox. We will not be discussing all 140 today because that would be insane. I've gone through and I have identified three themes. Three things that people generally seem to be having thoughts about these days. <laughs> And for this discussion, I am not alone because I thought that I might be, what's the word? When it's just like one person- Monologuing? E echo chambering. Oh, I yeah, would be yeah, echo chambering yeah. with my own followers <laughs> if I did this alone. So I have asked my friend to join me. Please introduce I'll yourself. Completely. Hi, my name is Anna. I also draw. How much should I say about yes. myself? Anna and I met 10 yes. years ago. We are online friends meeting for the first time in real life. Yes, a decade in, <laughs> in the making. We met because Anna beta read my fan fiction when I was 15. But then it also turns out that we both like are mostly art people now. Yes. So I, I went to art school. Um, I graduated three years ago. Now I work as a designer. I do comics, fun stuff. So the first theme that I wanted to talk about is titled Anime is Bad to Anime is Good to Anime is Bad. So the submissions that inspired this theme were number one, art teachers are very justified in telling people to not only draw stylized anime art. Nothing is original, but it's funny to see so much blatant plagiarism from young Hoyoverse fan artists especially, copying shit they see in Pinterest or other tar Twitter artists. And there is too much incest within styles. For example, anime styles will draw inspiration from other anime instead of real life, and Hoyo seems to be like that. The anime art style actually does suck and can get people stuck inside a box. Obviously there are exceptions, but from my experience it is a very limiting style, especially when it comes to Hoyoverse characters. If an artist makes only fan art, I usually unfollow them because I want to explore original stuff. Function slash character based designs are way more interesting than ones based on looks. People with severely any manhwa style <laughs> lack skill. It's important to add your own and pull from different sources. Webtoon art is objective garbage fire. <laughs> okay. As someone who's taught art before, Anna, well. what do you think of the advice to not draw anime? I've been a TA, so I think what's important is looking at what people's aims are with art like if drawing anime is what you love to do then you should genuinely do that i think if you're trying to grow as an artist like it's important to explore different styles and different references and look at life yeah i think that's what a lot of the frustration here is coming from mm -hmm. especially the ones that are referencing hoyo so much because hoyo first of all when you look at their care designs, a lot of criticism is coming from a lot of the women's clothing looking the same as each other's. Yeah. So that means they're referencing their own game to design future characters. That makes sense. And so fan artists will also reference Hoyo to do their fan art and also other fan artists to draw their fan art. So mm -hmm. like everyone's just self-referencing in it. The gene is, pool is <laughs> very <laughs> limited. Incestuous, <laughs> yes. But obviously it's not just an anime problem like Disney. Mm -hmm. So many people are like harping on Wish for being exactly the same as the previous Disney movies. Yeah. Wish to me feels very like written by committee, designed by committee. I'm always in the school that like a story or a movie that has fewer people in charge will feel more genuine, even though it's more specific to some like one particular person. I think the sincerity of the story will make it more relatable for more people than something that is like created by a ton of people to be as relatable to as many people as possible. I think when you stand off the edges like that, it, it ends up ultimately feeling less full of heart. Um, and I think you could say the same of character design in a lot of ways. So Yeah. Art, like, references from life. Mm -hmm. So, like, when art only references other art that has already maybe even referenced other yeah. art, that perhaps maybe that one was referenced from real life. But, like, I think all art should stem from the original soil mm -hmm. of um, <laughs> life itself. Yeah, for sure. And I think like when you're learning, it's perfectly, I mean, and nobody ever stops learning. It's perfectly okay to be like, I love this person's style. I love the style of this 
particular, you know, anime or manga or movie, et cetera, and, and reference it and learn from it like that. But I think it's always good to see what you can add to something and where you can find your own point of view. And I think just from a technical point of view as well, especially when it, when it comes to like understanding three-dimensional form, like if you're always referencing photographs or you're always referencing somebody's drawn stuff, you know, I think it's a bit of a, a crutch in terms of learning how to understand what things actually look like. And, you know, it's easy enough to just like look at your room and draw what's there or draw people you see walking around on the street. And I think there's always something to gain from that. One of my questions that I wrote down mm -hmm. um, challenges this because I'm like, is it necessary to draw from life? Oh yeah. If the internet has become life for many people, like is drawing oh from the internet essentially drawing from a form of life? I think internet being people's lives is not the same thing as like <laughs> internet being people's physical realities. I think genuinely like looking at stuff out in the real world, oh God, the real world. The internet is the real world. It's part of the real world. Looking at stuff in physical form, I think is incredibly useful. Yeah, not even just drawing from life, right? Yeah, like 100%. Creating, living, meaning. <laughs> meaning. <laughs> Drawing a meaning from the life you've lived in order to make the art you're going to make. Yeah, for sure. Especially like st in any aspect of storytelling. Yes. I think it's important to, to be out there. This one is hard to answer. How do you think the understanding of style Ooh. has changed over the years as social media has become more prominent for artists? Definitely stuff trends more quickly. Like trends come and go more quickly just because I think what, what's interesting now is that there's such a huge place for hobby artists to see other hobby artists. So you have this whole like group of people who can connect about art who aren't necessarily doing it professionally or you know who are especially like when it comes to fandom and i think that's really wonderful um and that obviously like propagates visually as well in that aspect you do see like there are people who learn to draw entirely from looking at fan art if that is another way to tie it into this broader critique because that's like the space that they live within but that what makes them like really happy that's what they love doing i don't think that that's ever necessarily like a bad thing yeah because i think a lot of friction is happening because people who want to become professional and people yeah. who are just drawing for fun are existing in the same space and even people who don't know which one they want to be yet for like, sure and that's the thing like not all advice is applicable to everybody so often i think just finding what's useful to you and pursuing that is the best track. Yeah, what do you think about what you know is objectifying garbage Oh fire? my god. First of all, I'm like, I'm one of those like obnoxious soft peddling, there's nothing objective ever in art, <laughs> but it's such a broad category too. Like, I think there are definitely extremely popular webtoons that have yeah. very questionable art quality, especially some webtoons start out pretty good and oh, then they yeah, just yeah, go yeah. downhill as time passes. Maybe the artist has lost passion or they created a system that is mm -hmm. creating bad art now. Yeah, but that always makes me really sad because I know like the schedules that webtoon artists have to work yeah. on is so extreme. So anytime I see the art going downhill, I'm like, ah, uh, I hope they're getting sleep. <laughs> But I mean, if if something is really popular, if the storytelling is coming across, I mean, like obviously people one, are still for example, reading it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. There are different goals. If you don't like it, that's fine. Just read something else. <laughs> yeah. I don't always love it either. Sometimes but. it can be encouraging because if you yeah. see yourself only as a storyteller and mm -hmm. you're not confident in your art, it shows that you can yeah. also tell your story. That's actually a really big point. I think that people who are good, really good at illustration, aren't always necessarily really good at comics or webtoons. And I think divorcing, like, how good are you at drawing a face versus how good are you at storytelling? They're like two different skill sets. And oftentimes people can be really good at both. Yeah. You have people like, like Mob Psycho, for example, like mm, you don't yes. look at that art and think, oh, that's gorgeous. Put that in, like, put that on my wall. I mean, actually, maybe you do. It's very charming, I think, but the storytelling is great, so. <laughs> but there all are also webtoons that are gorgeous. For sure. It, like, consistently. And I'm like, this yeah. seems, this is scary, actually. Yeah, Like, nobody's sure. gonna look at this panel for more than two seconds. And yet you <laughs> put, like, two hours, maybe two days worth of work into it. I feel I bad. Know. Yeah, I definitely feel that too. I'm, I definitely don't mean to say that like people who do webtoons are only good at storytelling. Not it's very much not the case. Like, there's a lot of really gorgeous stuff out there. Yeah, well, those are created by teams. One writer, <laughs> like ten artists. Oh boy, who are all getting underpaid. <laughs> The second general theme that I was noticing throughout the submissions was some push and pull between people who 
I have opinions about modern slash abstract art. So the second theme is called the value of abstract and modern art to today's artist, aka the balance between meaning and skill. The reference submissions are digital artists need to spend much more time studying abstract and contemporary art. Modern art where it's a few blocky colors on a canvas is so ugly, I can't stand it. Drawing slash painting does not make you an artist. Art is more than just drawings. Modern art is actually incredibly interesting and it was super innovative at the time. Artists with a passion for storytelling rather than design are often not popular. I think art is being used in a way that is only a visual eroticism or visually satisfying thing rather than a deep story with real issues. The story isn't too important these days in the mainstream. Some art is not subjective. It's just not art. <laughs> TVH abstract art feels low effort to me. Not all of it, but I do feel like some of it legit doesn't have any thought behind it. Very cool submissions, guys. I love seeing how much you actually disagree with each other. It means all your opinions are unpopular. <laughs> there are a lot of modern art haters out in the world, especially among digital high artists. Schoolers. Oh. oh, yes, high schoolers. <laughs> I've written down some points of discussion. Number one, do you think there is value in studying modern art for a regular artist? I think so, personally. Maybe we can do yeah. the second one too. Is okay. modern art bullshit? Is modern art bullshit, lol. Uh, I don't think so. I feel like when you look at something, a piece, and you don't understand it at first glance, it's always important to try to learn about the context behind it because there's a chance you're not like the target audience to see something at first glance. If something was created for an audience in a time when, if it was, if it's a reaction to something specific that was happening happening in somebody's life or in the world around them, then that context I think is an important part of the piece. And it's always interesting to see how people are expressing those in non-objective manners. Yeah, that relates to one of the submissions, which is like, art is more than just drawing, and drawing and painting doesn't make you an artist. There's so many different avenues For that sure. you can do art in. Mm -hmm. Like, drawing a depiction of something is not the only way to do 100%. That. Yeah. I think that if you, like, if what you jump to when you want to depict sadness is an illustration of somebody looking sad like that's one way to depict it but when you look at how people are breaking down feelings and form um, and how to communicate those in perhaps not the most obvious manner I feel like there's always something you can bring back to your work even if your goal is to illustrate it but yeah I think there's sort of a disconnect between people who think that the goal of art is to show something beautiful or show something as realistic as possible and people who are using it as like a thought experiment and just because something is on the same wall as a portrait doesn't necessarily mean that the goals are the same as that other painting. Yeah. Like, who's that artist who just like splatters paint everywhere? Uh, Jason, Jackson Pollock. Pollock. Oh, Jason. <laughs> Jackson Pollock. Jason. Yeah. Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock. A lot of people are like, mm, I could do that. Why can't I sell it for a million dollars? What I think is really interesting about a lot of famous artists who work more abstractly is that if you look back at their lives, a lot of times these people like start yeah. out, you see their early works and they are perfectly competent at realism and then they turn towards abstraction for other reasons because they feel like it. They, they want to explore something different. At the same time, I think everyone can achieve realism. Yes. In the same way that yeah. everyone can achieve abstract art. Well, not like certain type, like technically. Mm -hmm. Both can be achieved. Yeah, yeah, anyone. yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, with the advent of photography, realism, I think, was less of a goal. And I think a lot of artists were like, okay, what are we... What are we gonna explore now? Um, yes, and I think in the age of AI, oh technique God. is becoming less and less important and it is elevating the importance actually of the essence of the artist. Yeah, if you look at AR art and you're like, okay, well technically that looks exactly like a depiction of a young sexy woman, but like, why doesn't this hit as an illustration? I think there's, there's, a, there's a lot more skill to creating a successful image than realism and that's a really great contemporary demonstration of that. Do we address this? Why do you think so many artists and people in general are triggered by modern art and why there is such a fundamental gap between like the common person and the person who appreciates modern art? <laughs> well, I can be both a modern art hater and an appreciator. Like I had to study this in art school yeah, and likewise. I actually 
I didn't really enjoy it, but like having to study the critical history of all of this makes me realize that there is a critical history here and there is a critical practice here and it's not all just bullshit. Yeah. Some of it is though. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I think that um, just because something isn't to your taste doesn't mean that there's no value in it or no effort or intent. I think if something is, you know, highly intent based, it's often like, Like at first glance, you won't necessarily get it, but I think delving deeper is always worth a look, especially if it's causing like a strong emotional reaction. You're like, why is that up there? Sometimes that's the point of the piece is to make you question like, what is why? Why are you feeling that way, huh? (laughs) Yeah, why are you feeling that way? Or like what what deserves to be up here in the gallery, you know? Yeah. At what point does story slash meaning overtake the art so much that it becomes indigestible? Like there seems to be a balance in mm-hmm. people's reactions to art where it's like something can be too technical and it doesn't make them feel anything but something yeah. can be too abstract and too full of meaning and it becomes alien to them as well so it appears there seems to be a balance where it's like the story and the meaning <laughs> is and the technique is like working together to deliver something understandable to the audience <laughs> i mean yeah definitely like the most famous pieces out there are the ones that work because they somehow manage to keep both in hand. I don't know, like, at what point something overtakes it. I would say that, like, the general audience, sometimes people are creating things for themselves, like, to process things that they personally feel, and Mm -hmm. just because not everybody gets it doesn't mean that it isn't worthwhile. Yeah, it was really interesting my freshman year. I feel like I wasn't able to create anything remotely similar to what I was creating prior to entering school, because we had, like, a foundations year where it was very, like, some of it was much more conceptual and there wasn't really opportunity to do anything really illustration-y so I kind of had to force myself to think like is conveying something like visually directly always the best solution how can you think around like can you create an object that conveys the spirit of a story or emotion more purely etc yes and just being forced to think like that was really yes I think when I was in school I thought everything was bs and then out of school and I'm like actually (laughs) <laughs> you can make art any way you want. Like, For sure. If you yeah. have something you need to express, you can do a drawing, sure. You can make a video, though. You can yeah. make music. It's just about, like, creating something from yourself slash yeah. whatever you're looking at or are inspired by. Okay, the third topic is some things only come with age and experience. Mm-hmm. So there seems to be a lot of submissions that reference age and mm-hmm. especially younger artists. Let's read through these submissions. Young artists, especially those in the 10 to 16 year old range, will put their age in their bios as a selling point, but then remove it once they reach 17 or older and their art looks average or stagnated. Mm. Child prodigies on Instagram are not that good. Shift your focus from gaining followers and following trends and going viral to building connections with other artists and making friends. Be the first one to initiate a convo and hang out with local artists. Artists should support each other as peers and not on a hierarchy level. Creating engagement bait and popular art seems boring and not sustainable. Our own perceived greatness can greatly hinder progress. Think less of your art and that means growth. Sometimes as time goes on, art skill declines instead of improving. Beginner artists are more talented than the masters. Idolizing slash gawking over popular artists IRL is hella weird. They are regular people. Seen a lot at Lightbox Expo. As you might notice, some of these are not related to age, but I think that some of these are opinions held by artists of a certain age Mm -hmm. or addressing opinions that are held by artists of a certain age. For example, I think a lot of younger people probably are the ones who idolize a lot and care a lot about hierarchy and popularity. For sure. And that sort of stuff just becomes less and less more important as you get older. So I wanted to ask, how did your perception of art change as you grew older? I think I was generally just like exposed to more things. So my tastes have definitely changed a lot since I was younger. Looking back at the stuff that I thought was so cool then and how my tastes have changed, it makes me look at my current taste and be like, oh, this too will change. Like it's it's easier for me to recognize things as I guess trends my perception of art did you think you were a talented young person when you were younger yeah I mean I I mean I was in a high school where I was like the drawing kid I think Uh that's a pretty common experience for a lot of people so do you still think you're that prodigy (laughs) oh god no I mean I think I was good at drawing from like a technical standpoint when Mm -hmm. I was in high school I don't necessarily think I was great at like thinking about art and there are a lot of people who are really good out there i don't i don't think it's very useful for me to think of myself as the best or the worst or strive to be the best i think more like 
trying to be better than I was a year ago is generally useful. Since you've read the things I wrote in high school and you middle good. school. <laughs> um, they're good. No, 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 they're not good. They're I remember like, them being good. <laughs> they were good to a 14 year old. Okay. That doesn't count. <laughs> Like, I felt like a lot of that was, like, me trying to imitate depth as mm -hmm. a young teenager who yeah. didn't understand what depth was, but I had certain feelings I wanted to, to express, but yeah. I didn't know how. So I just imitated expressions yeah. of real depth from other sources, other artists. And looking at those drawings now, I'm like, you really think you did something? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. It's just, like, it's important, I guess. Yeah, I feel like you have to get that stuff... You like doing that stuff is always like a useful learning experience in and of itself. If it's significant to you at the time, <laughs> I think that I mean we wouldn't have met otherwise. Did you ever watch Free the swimming show? I did not. Their lack of belly buttons and nipples unnerved me. Okay. Well, one of the first quotes in that show is. Let me look it up to make sure it's right. Am I right? They don't have either of those, right? Oh my From God. maximum hydrodynamic qualities. They have had them surgically removed. This quote here. I always think about it. When you're 10, they call you a prodigy. When you're 15, they call you a genius. But once you hit 20, you're just a normal person. <laughs> That's fair. I think, honestly, though, like getting older and meeting people who are like really good, like, like even just like people who are also all like the art kid in high school, I feel like humbling. Yeah. There's this one point, uh, one of the submissions that is like, our own perceived greatness can greatly hinder progress. Think of your less of your art equals growth. And I don't think you should ever like be down on yourself, like, oh, why do I suck, et cetera. But I think that like recognizing your capability to to grow is always a good thing. Yes. I was also definitely the big fish in a small pond mm -hmm. when I was yeah. in high school. But deep down I knew that I was not. So I was too yeah. intimidated to go to art school actually, because I knew there would be people better than me. Mm -hmm. I didn't want my ego to be <laughs> beaten like that. Our perceptions definitely changed since we were sure. like teenagers. In regards to the age thing, younger artists are usually closer to the beginning of the learning curve when they're like improving rapidly yeah. and that is intimidating, but I think that's just how it is, man. I also think that most of the internet is just designed for young people. <laughs> like the internet is filled with teenagers. Like adults on the internet don't really realize this all the time yeah. because everyone speaks in the same way. Yeah. But like content sure. is created for people who are way younger than you if you're like mid twenties <laughs> and above, okay? And also those people have the most time to be posting random shit all that, the time. That is very true. Also like teenagers generally have more time. Like if you're a teenager who really got into like digital art, yeah. the amount of time they have to practice versus somebody who realizes that later in life is usually greater and like naturally, it's a lot easier to improve like that. But I think also there are a lot of older people who aren't on the internet and posting as much. And, you know, they're making cool stuff too. So yeah, like you said, it definitely skews younger in some places. Yeah, and I mean, I think older people on the internet should have so much more confidence when it comes to art because they have the only thing that young people don't have when it comes to art and that's like experience. Yeah, for sure. If art comes from experience and living life, the older you are, the better your art becomes automatically, I feel like. Because <laughs> you like, have experienced things that young people just haven't. Mm -hmm. Although also, like, I would say that people's life experiences and their ages aren't always necessarily like a linear match. But for sure, even if you're somebody who's getting into art at an older age, having all the life experience that you've had and like the time to develop your tastes, I feel like that has to be incredibly useful when it comes to figuring out what you want to draw and yes. how you want to progress. But oh, oh, this other point, point about like shift your focus from gaining followers slash following trends and going viral to building connections with other artists and making friends. Artists should support each other's peers, not a hierarchy level. I'm somebody who's really bad at posting on social media, to be honest, but I feel like having people who I know who, who make art, that to me is a is a lot of fun and I feel like I learn the most from my direct peers. Just sending them a picture of something <laughs> or like 10 different things with the opacity change like oh, no. 2% and just being able to get feedback like that, I feel like that's such a great resource. So yeah, if you like their art or you have a friend who draws, like have a chat. <laughs> oh, I have a question for you since you went mm -hmm. to art school that I was too intimidated to go to. Do you think oh, there's boy. like a lot of ego flaunting there? Like people following oh, people? Oh, 100%. Oh. With like a lot of followers and everything. Oh, I don't know so much about like, I mean, I don't know if things have changed even since I went to art school, but I don't know. Like definitely there is ego flaunting. I don't know if 
it has to do as much with like followers but like if somebody's really good at art you're like oh i want to be friends with that person Mm -hmm. i think that's sort of the name of the game especially like you're sitting in class critiquing each other's works all day it's like you can tell like some people are really good and definitely that causes complexes and stuff but it's also a great place to be around because like those are the people who are critiquing your work and they often have really useful things to say people can be clicky about wanting to only be friends with people who have good art that is definitely a thing in art school. Like, it's good to seek out friends who you who you think are better at art than you. Like, that's always fine. I think when it comes to, like, acting like an asshole towards somebody as a person because you don't like their art, unless their art is about, like, stuff about them as a person that you really <laughs> are personally disgusted by, it's more likely that you don't like somebody because in critique they are acting poorly on a personal manner rather than like in an oh, yeah. artistic manner. You know what I mean? Yeah. Should we shift to the art school questions? There are oh, some yeah. like art school submissions. Somebody submitted, art college isn't overrated. It's actually useful if you put in effort. The art school is overrated. Take our folks who just don't want long-term professions. Art schools like Cal Arts or Art Center are entirely pay to win through the school's name. I think, yeah. If you pay that much money, I think you should gain something from it. That sounds really bad. I mean, you should gain something from it. Not everybody does. I think it's 100%. Like, you're paying to be around people who may one day... Like, you're paying to make connections, and that name can, like... I don't know if it can get you in the door with how oversaturated everything is now, but, like, people will pay attention to that. And they're, like, career fairs, and you're going to have professors who are in the industry. um, And that's really useful. I think for me, art school was most useful in terms of exposing me to things that I wouldn't have sought out on my own. I think there are a ton of resources on how to get good at drawing uh, online, how to get good at like thinking about art. And I'm not saying that I'm like that great or anything like that, but I definitely wouldn't, let's put it this way, I didn't know what I didn't know. And yeah. if I were to entirely self-direct my studies, it wouldn't have brought me to the same places or broadened my scope in the same way that it would have been at art school. That being said, it is expensive. I think it's entirely valid for people to seek out alternative means of education. Like he said, it's entirely possible to get all the technical skills you need online, Mm -hmm. but you will be echo chambering yourself a little bit when it comes to the things you feed yourself and the things you're exposed to. Any sort of education will broaden your scopes to yeah, 100%. Um, a lot of different people, a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different histories, critical studies, etc. Yeah. yeah, being around people who are striving for the same goals and dreams is always valuable. It can be stressful, but it's valuable. That's another thing too, like deciding at age 16 or 17 that that's what you want to do for the rest of your life is difficult. And you can't guarantee that decision will be the one that you agree with once you've graduated, but if you feel like you're certain that that is a path that you're interested in and you can afford it, I think it genuinely can be a very valuable experience. Yes. If you put in effort, as that person that's, said. That's important, it's if you put in effort. You shouldn't expect education or art school to just give you the things you need to succeed. 100%. For me, so much of it was about critique, and if you're not willing to accept constructive criticism, then you're on your own, buddy. <laughs> yeah, like schools like CalArts and Art Center are pay to win, but only if you like take entire yeah. advantage of your time there. If you just go there and do jack shit, of course you're not going to win. Maybe there are some people that yeah. do, though. But the thing we is, like, I hate to say it, but there are people who are really good who paid and still aren't yeah. winning, too. You know, if it was as simple as that, that would be, I can't say that would be great because that would be, you know, fucked up in its own way. But. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's like just cringe. read some general submissions now. Cool, cool. Do you want to pick one? There's a lot. Let me see what there is. Ooh, beginner artist's art is bad, and I think they should be critiqued without sugarcoating anything. I think that's kind of an asshole move. I think that in general, it's just as useful for people to hear when they're beginning what they're succeeding at as much as what they're doing poorly at. And I think that way they can focus on the stuff that they need to improve while not like feeling down in the dumps about anything and genuinely knowing like what's working and what they're starting to do well at. Yeah, that's kind of a weird one because not everyone's trying to improve like that. Oh yeah, for sure, 100%. Also like critique people if they're asking for it, but unsolicited critique on like social media is 
Like people are posting art generally because they feel good about it and they want to share it with people who like it. So don't don't go into people's house and take a poop on their rug. This is related to the anime thing. <laughs> Only drawing small pointy noses is, is boring and style isn't an excuse. <laughs> Okay, I think the thing about a lot of these submissions is that a lot of people were submitting stuff like if you don't draw all the races, you're racist, or if you only draw this race, you're racist, only drawing this sort of thing makes you boring, etc. It's like, if you're trying to do art as a career, yes, you should be able to draw many, many different things and mm -hmm. expand your skill set and your visual library that way. Yeah, and your worldview too. I don't. I think even as a hobbyist, it's worth like confronting your biases. But yeah, I think that's that's like critical if you're trying to be a career artist. If you're a hobby artist, like yeah, you can draw what you like, but still confront your biases. I mean, I've definitely been guilty of like drawing only pretty people. But. I think Hoyo ruined me because Hoyo. Let's let's go back to Hoyo verse, okay? <laughs> Hoyo only has like a few different types of body mm -hmm. types that's actually i'm gonna be honest i one of the reasons i've never gotten into genshin is like the character designs really don't grab me they all kind of look the same to me it's like one mannequin and then they change the hair and the clothes and the eye color yeah exactly that's about it and so people who draw a lot of hoyo stuff uh, and anime in general mm -hmm. they only learn yeah, how to draw sure. one type of thing and i think it goes back to like drawing from life yeah Especially if your aim is to be a storyteller. Like, if your aim is just to draw, like, pretty people, pretty people, fine. like, you know, live your best life. But if your aim is to be a storyteller, eesh, like, add a little real world into that. Yeah, once I got into Genshin, I noticed all of my art turning into the same guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> Even if you watch anime, like, there's different types of body type characters in anime. A lot of it is just, like, guy, girl with big boobs. Guy read, with a lot of muscles. Read Dungeon Meshi. If you want, like, manga, if you want to look at a manga artist who's really great at designing a variety of uh, body types and races, I think to an extent, but, like, somebody who's really purposeful about character design, I think that the mangaka who does Dungeon Meshi is a really great person to look at. Um, it's fun to look at her exploration. Yeah, and it's unfair to rag on Hoyo too much because they are coming out with ZZZ, and in that video game, all the characters have extremely different body types. So it's not like they can't do it, it's just that the genre of the game of Genshin and Star Rail don't allow for that. A lot of people are a little bit frustrated about what non-artists find good, that like a lot of uh, mainstream and popular art isn't actually good from an artistic point of view or a technical point of view. And it's like, yeah, the, certain people make art for artists. Other people make art for the market. Mm -hmm. It's just different things. Also, it's interesting to me, like the idea that having a ton of followers is like, I don't know, I think good for them. They did that. Like that shouldn't bother you too much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This person says talking about the art community is a bit too general. I agree. Oh yeah, for sure. Especially because like, when, just when we're talking, it seems like we have slightly different spheres within social media on it. And I think that gives us different perspectives because like some things that you notice as trends or some things that I notice as trends are probably slightly, slightly different as well. Um, and anytime you're describing something as a monolith, like I think that's part of why like you always have like a hot take of the day on art Twitter is because sometimes people are talking specifically to their audience and it reaches outside that and everybody's like, actually, no, not for me. And it's like, well, yeah, actually, that wasn't about you to begin yeah. with. There's this one YouTuber, I think, who popularized the art community bit where he reports art drama that's happening. And a lot of people in the comments are like, I had no idea this was happening. I'm like, well, good, because... There's like about 300 different art communities out there and not just one. For sure, for sure. Okay, should we end it here? I feel like we talked for like two hours. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, let's do a check-in on Lilia and see what her wig is doing. <laughs> this is Lilia. She's been working on a wig this entire time. How's it going? Oh, her Catching. nose. <laughs> no, I didn't notice. Nice. Any last words, Anna? <laughs> Um, thanks for having me. It's always good to like have conversations about stuff like that in good faith. Yeah. And like from the point of view, if you're willing to hear what somebody's take is and let them explain it, and then you're willing to hear the rebuttal and let them explain it, etc., and come out feeling like maybe yes. we don't agree, but nuanced discussions are important, not just 
completely black and white if you're yeah. doing this then you're bad if you're doing I mean this. I think that's that's where a lot of like the unpo unpopular opinions come from is yeah. they're often very black and white perspectives on things that are by nature much more complicated so <laughs> okay thanks for talking with me Anna <laughs> thanks for having me <laughs>